Do you have a story to share with the world? Of course you do. We all have stories to share. An Anchor podcast allows you to share your interests in a way that connects to others all across the globe. If you have been considering starting your own podcast and don't know where to begin, Anchor makes it easy to record, edit, and publish with the click of a button. You can even add music. Whether it's crime dramas, self-improvement, paranormal adventures, or tips about parenting, you too can share your unique imprint on the world. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. You've got this. I believe in you. Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya, and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tools and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Hello, all of my beautiful friends. This episode is going to be quite interesting. Uh, Recently, I was asked to be on a podcast to uh, share some of my spiritual awakening journey And in that journey, I was uh, sharing a story about how I was activated in what's called light language or star language or cosmic language. Um, I was not planning on sharing that in this podcast. However, I did. And now a lot of people have a lot of questions. So I thought that I would dive a little bit into what light language is and maybe speak a little bit at the end so that way you can have a sense of what it sounds like and get a little bit of a feeling and even a clearing from this as well. So uh, many of us as light workers are beginning to remember our unique light signature in the world. Um, and this is where us as empaths also fall into this category. So we are beginning to wake up to who we are. We are having a deeper understanding of uh, our unique gifts and why we are here. Uh, We are very intuitive and we may be longing for something else outside of this earthly body. And oftentimes that can be really hard for us because we are so much bigger um, from a consciousness state than we are here in these in these avatars, so to speak, or these, these earthly bodies. And, you know, many of us, maybe our whole lives, I know for me as an empath, I've always kind of felt a little bit out of place. I, I always, uh, you know, kind of walked to the beat of my own drum. I would always buck the system in areas that I didn't feel, um, were, were positive. And I would, you know, just really find myself not really feeling fitting into this world. And so if you're sensing that and you're feeling that, or maybe you have for a long time, or maybe you're just beginning to tune into that now, um, odds are you're probably a light worker or even a star seed for that matter. So, you know, what, what is a star seed? A star seed is basically someone who was, uh, planted here on the earth from the stars. And we are here to hold a certain frequency or a certain resonance. And we do that through our light, through our light body. And as we raise our own personal frequency, we have a ripple effect that goes out into the world. And uh, many of us have these abilities, these gifts, uh, like our clair, our clairs, clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognizance, clairgustance, you know, all of those. If you're not familiar with those, go back and listen to my uh, podcast on superhuman abilities of the empath. And that'll give you a little bit more detail <clears throat> on uh, those different abilities that we carry. But uh, majority of it is that we're holding a significant amount of light. And in order to hold more light, we have to clear those denser energies, those emotions, uh, our traumas, things that weigh us down and hold us down. And the more that we clear those, the more we can raise our frequency, raise our vibration so that we can anchor in more light here on uh, on the earth. And many of us are being placed around the world right now. We're being moved, being shifted. If you're feeling that uh, sense of, uh, I don't know where I'm supposed to be, but I feel like I'm supposed to move, odds are you're probably a light worker. You're probably what's called a grid worker. And I'm going to go into more detail about some of these things in future podcasts, because I do feel that we are beginning to awaken faster and faster with these unique abilities and gifts. And many of us are being uh, guided all over the planet to hold our light, almost like a lighthouse or a beacon of light. And 
many of us at this point are, have been alone for a long time. And it's because we are holding and sharing that light. However, more and more of us are waking up and we are being guided to come together more and more. And <clears throat> so if you're feeling that sense of pull or push to move, go with that. Listen to your gut. That's your intuition. It's telling you, um, it's time. And, you know, I've shared in, in some of my uh, stories that that happened to me about three or four years ago, I had lived in uh, Florida for about 20 years and I was being strongly guided to move out to the Pacific Northwest. I didn't really even know where I was meant to go. I had packed all of my stuff up in my home and my lease was going to be done in two weeks. And I had the U-Haul ready. I just didn't even know where I was going all the way up until about a week before I left and I ended up in Washington state and now I'm in North Idaho, but it's just a little bit, you know, over the border, but I was guided and I listened to that intuition and my gifts began to open up tremendously. I began to contact and come in communication with other light, light workers in the area. And we started to work together. I was being guided to go to all these different parks across the land. And then I learned that I am what's called a grid worker and I hold light codes. And then I began to speak a language, different languages, dialects, things that were built into my subconscious mind that I was slowly beginning to remember. And then I was beginning to have contact, uh, extraterrestrial contact, Sasquatch contact, which is even funny. Um, if you want to hear more about my story, check out spaced out radio on their YouTube channel. I just shared my story of being activated and how I started to have all this contact with these higher dimensional beings and how my journey just transformed over a summer, the summer of 2020. And so now I'm beginning to feel more confident with coming out with my story because many of us are in this transitionary stage. And this is where light language comes into play for, for several of us. I mean, for me, I didn't even know what this was. I, I, um, you know, was, was activated through this process and I slowly began to speak it. And now it just flows through me very easily and it's all different dialects. And it really is based off of who I'm working with as a client, or if I'm speaking to an audience like you all, uh, it really just comes out whoever is meant to hear it because it's based off of a frequency. You know, Nikola Tesla talks about if we want to understand the secrets of the universe, we need to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And light language is a frequency. So what is light language? Uh, basically, it's just a very clear knowing. And you can understand these, these signs and symbols when we dive in to uh, you know, what light language is. And for me, it really, I can feel it in every sense of my being. It just, it vibrates through, through my body. And it's just crazy how once I start speaking it, my whole body shifts and I can feel, you know, what I talk about my cosmic orgasms, <laughs> which are those ripples of energy that just kind of roll through me. And I can definitely feel that and sense that when I am, you know, speaking light language and oftentimes people can hear it in, you know, in my tone of my voice. And I think it's kind of funny that my parents named me Tanya, but it's spelled T-O-N-I-A. In my whole life, they called me Tone, which is really funny because um, I'm beginning to realize that part of my journey here on, uh, you know, planet Earth is to assist with frequencies and to assist with um, teaching people how to tap in to their gifts and having a deeper understanding of what their gifts are and not being afraid to stand in your power and really have a deeper understanding and knowing of who you are on a, on a soul level. And this can be very scary for many of us because we don't really even understand what that, what that entails. And it can be very scary. So when I started to wake up to, to light language, I it first started to use my hands and um, many people were activated with their voice, but I was activated with my hands first. I started to draw out different symbols and sacred geometry and things that um, I guess I would just correlate it to sign language, but it was more of a cosmic sign language. And then as time went on, I started to uh, write symbols. I started to write things first. 
And these things looked uh, very um, Egyptian in nature. I, I, I can't explain it, but they look very Egyptian in nature. And um, it was interesting to me because I didn't really know what these things were. And then as time went on, I started speaking it and I could look at these symbols and I could speak it. And so these symbols were holding not just like a word, like we're accustomed to in the English language. It was actually a concept. It was a very large amount of information in one little symbol. And so as I began to speak it, I noticed that it would come up in my client sessions if it resonated with that client and different dialects would come up. And I was like, oh my goodness, like this is just crazy. So I started to learn more about it and I would listen to other people speak it. I would uh, visualize people drawing it out. And there's a beautiful page on Facebook, a light language page that I follow. And I started to just really feel comfortable, you know, with this, this new language. And is it new? Honestly, I think it's ancient. I think it's built into our subconscious mind. And I just created a, a remembrance of it. I had a memory of it and I brought it forward. And so what is light language? It's a channeled cosmic light containing powerful, transformative light codes and energy. It activates our light body, which is our Merkaba, and it aligns with our soul's original divine blueprint. So today I'm actually having a meeting with some gals about resetting our divine blueprint. So I'm hoping to share some of that information soon on this podcast um, because many of us are including myself, have been programmed with an old template or an old old uh, blueprint, so to speak. And I am learning how to reset my own blueprint back to my divinity, back to my original template from God, from source, from universe, however you like to, to present that. So when I speak like language, it transmutes energy and distortions and blockages, not only within myself, but within others. And, it, you know, it's harnessed and directed to provide soul growth and evolution for people. And that's just fascinating in itself because I can witness that when, when you speak it, people will often feel a vibration in their body and it's expressed through different avenues, through spoken word, through songs, through movements, or even like I said, through our hands and through written word. And so light language bypasses the conscious mind. Like when you hear it, many of you want to, I know even with me, you want to, uh, try to figure it out with our mind, but really it's meant to be felt with our heart. And so when we sit with it and we allow it to pass through our energetic system, oftentimes we will feel shifts and changes. Um, I've had many people giggle, cry, um, kind of feel a very overwhelming sense of peace or significant vibrations or buzzing throughout the body. There's been a variety of ways that people have received the light language and it's really different. It's really different based off of um, the dialect that I speak, as well as the energy or the information that comes through. And none of this is um, scary or demonic. I've actually had people tell me that it kind of sounds like speaking in tongues, which I've never really listened to that before. Um, but for me, the best way that I can explain it, because I'm kind of a you know, a Star Wars nerd a little bit is when Han Solo speaks to Jabba the Hutt and then he goes off and speaks to the Ewoks and then he speaks to other beings. He has a different dialect or a different language. And so to me, it's kind of a, an analogy that he is speaking different light language or different star languages to these different beings for them to understand. It's almost like if you speak English and then you go to France and you want to speak French because you're around that, uh, that dialect, or you go to Spain and you want to speak, um, Spanish or Mexico and you know, you want to speak Hispanic. So it really is very similar to that in language, but when it comes through, you know, for me, I don't always know exactly what, um, dialect it is. Sometimes I do like very powerfully, sometimes the Pleiadian energy or the Arcturian energy will come through. Um, but oftentimes it's like, it can be very new to me. So when I was activated, I was at a retreat and they had us all get into a circle and there was probably 40 people in the circle. And then they had a chair in the middle and they'd have one person sit in the middle and then they would, we would, um, 
I'll hum or do a sound like an E, like a high vibrational pitch. And then the people would start speaking. And I was amazed. I was amazed and fascinated by how everybody had a different dialect or a different language, but how we were feeling it in our body. And, you know, I, this was all new to me at this time. And so I kind of waited, there was like 40 people. I was probably number 38 <laughs> before I actually went into the circle. But when I was activated, it was just my hands. I didn't speak a word. And so I was activating my cosmic sign language first. And so, you know, a way that I can kind of share with you to try and activate your own light language, if this is something that resonates with you, um, is to, you know, look yourself in the mirror, go into a mirror and maybe not have anyone around you. So you're not feeling self-conscious or, you know, worried if people can hear you, but look yourself in the mirror, look yourself in the eyes and command. Okay. So I've talked about this, how we command our subconscious mind to do things, command to activate your light language now. So I command to activate my light language now, and then make a tune or a sound, um, maybe an ohm or a, um, a hum or a, mm or an E do something until words start coming out or your hands start moving, or you start seeing images in your mind's eye, or maybe you start seeing sacred geometry. Um, maybe you have a pen and paper there just in case you feel this urge to write things down. Um, and, and be patient with yourself. It took me some time to learn it. Uh, and it does sound a little bit like gibberish sometimes. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of funny. And it really just depends on the dialect and, um, uh, a lot of, uh, tongue rolling sometimes some, some of that back, um, throat sort of, uh, clearing can happen. I've had clients where I've spoken and they just start coughing and coughing and coughing and they can't stop. And oftentimes it's because we're clearing their throat chakra. And so, you know, try that experiment with that a little bit and see what happens. At first you may laugh because I know when I did it, I sounded like I was a baby. It was like, goo goo gaga, ro, ro, to, you know, and I was just giggling and laughing. But a lot of it is because you're using different muscles in your throat and in your tongue and in your mouth that we aren't accustomed to in the English language or even other languages for that matter. Now I took French in school and there was a lot of, you know, in the back of your throat. And so sometimes I have that come up in my uh, light language and uh, a lot of a rolling of the tongue, like, but some of it will, uh, my tongue will move in ways. I don't even know how it even happens that it comes out. <laughs> so we, that's why we have to practice it. It's just like a sport or, or, um, you know, a creative activity, painting or whatever you enjoy doing. You have to practice it a little bit before you get good at it. So don't beat yourself up if it's not coming freely. I encourage you to listen, you know, find, get on YouTube or get on, you know, different social media platforms and listen to people speaking it or visualize uh, the written language of it and really get yourself accustomed to what it looks like, what it sounds like. Uh, and I'm sure that different dialects will vibrate, will resonate or vibrate with you uh, based off of your frequency or based off of your star origin. And so, you know, there are some that I listen to and I'm like, Ooh, I, that feels weird in my body. I'm not sure. And then there's other ones that I'm just like, gosh, that feels so good. I can listen to that all day long. So, you know, listen to different dialects and, and different, um, you know, ways of people, different people speaking it. I think that's important. There's people that speak the dolphin, you know, language and they pull in that Lemurian uh, aspect. And, and so it can really be very versatile in how it is presented to you. So I'm going to speak a little bit here and I'm going to just tune into you as an audience and what, uh, resonates with you right now. And if this doesn't resonate, then that's okay. Just, just move on and, um, you know, go along your merry way. And if this does resonate, then just sit with it. And I encourage you to close your eyes, take a deep breath in, maybe a couple in and out, and just really get into a relaxed state and allow this energy to flow through you. Visualize it flowing through your heart. Okay. Don't try to question it, figure it out. Um, and just allow the emotion to, to, to present itself with whatever, you know, that may be. 
and, um, you know, just really sit back and enjoy it. Okay. So I'm going to allow this to come through now and I'm bringing this in from the highest vibrational, um, intention that this information through light codes will come through you in a very high vibrational, loving, caring, compassionate way. ほりあなはしれけおろとしあなはかかいあなはいねじれあかはいほろとしききあらたもにあなはいぎぎれあたかはいえらえへんのいひひきえじれあてきおろとほろとしあなそりあなはしきえ Rashiana Oi, harata hoi anna ha kokoi arata ho shiana na noi arati ki aratori ani ahani korota shiana na hai arati ki ki rotosk no rota ki rato to toi anna na noi anna nin ki ki roi akahari ani ahani deji akahari anai bu shiana ho shiki e de anna. You are so loved. You are so worthy. You are divine. Wow. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I got really hot <laughs> and I have a lot of energy running through me right now. A lot of mixed emotions. So I hope that you receive that transmission. Whew, because I think I did. <laughs> that was very powerful. It was very loving. But it was always a little intense there in the middle too. So I send you all so much uplifting, positive, loving, healing energy. Take care. You deserve to navigate your life as an empath in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.thesoulcafe.org.